One of the reasons that many people buy a Weta is because they've been told that it won't flip. It can't capsize this boat. And then at some point they find themselves in heavier winds and they do end up capsizing or pitch poling and wondering what went wrong. Well, here's the thing. Trimorans are wide and they allow you to generate tremendous riding moment. It keeps the boat flatter and therefore allows you to utilize more power and go faster. But the same thing that works for you on one end can often work against you on the other end. Moving slowly or getting caught in the wrong place on the boat at the wrong time will almost surely lead to a capsize or even a reverse capsize. But we'll leave boat trim for another day. Right now, I want to talk about the extremely effective controls found on the weather. Controls that allow users to sail in heavy wind conditions and still maintain great control over this boat. Both the main sheet and the jib can be effectively depowered by hooking the sheets further forward on the respective clue plates. On the jib, you'll depower by going low and forward. By doing this, you change where most of the pull on the sail occurs. Moving forward on the clue plate puts more pull on the sail foot and less on the leech. This allows the top of the sail to twist off and spill air. If you're wondering about these gray lines on the jib, I drew them early on as an aid to actually seeing where most of the sheet pull falls. Now on the main, you'll do the same thing. The rear attachment pulls mostly on the leech and allows a fuller sail shape, although you will have more drag. Going forward shifts more pull to the foot both flattening the sail and allowing the top to twist off more. This reduces power, particularly at the top of this long lever that we call a mast. Now there's even more you can do to depower your wetter rig. This line controls the Cunningham. Generally, you'll only pull on enough Cunningham to straighten the sail. But in higher winds, you can really crank it on and bend the top of the mast to the rear. This will further twist off the top of the sail, spill more air, and get rid of more power. It also flattens the sail a bit, which again reduces power. This control can be employed on the fly as conditions dictate. Mast drag from vertical has a definite effect on your boat's performance. In general, a more upright mast will deliver more power, particularly in light air. Breaking the mast back reduces power and increases pointing ability. Of course, something else happens when you change your mast rake. The boat helm changes. In almost no case would you desire to have lee helm, which a mast that is too upright can certainly cause. The general preference is for just a bit of weather helm, not too much. Mast rake is something you'll have to play with to determine what feels best to you. But remember that you go forward for more power and back for less power and higher pointing ability. Frankly, I think when you hit about four degrees of rake, you'll be in the ballpark for best all around use. To adjust your mast rake, just relocate the side shroud attachment points. Play around with it a bit, but don't get too caught up on constantly adjusting the amount of rake. I consider batten tension to be the last frontier for speed. A fuller sail is a more powerful sail, yet it incurs more drag. A flatter sail is less powerful, but has less drag. Generally, you want a fuller sail in lighter air and a flatter sail in higher winds. Now here's a tip. You don't have to run the same shape all the way up and down the sail. You can effectively use bat tension to get different parts of the sail to do different things. Very high winds, you might adjust bat tension so that the top third or so of your sail is pretty flat while retaining a fuller shape in the lower portion of the sail. Setting up this way decreases the power you'll have at the top of that long mast lever, but still maintain good power down low. So you get less healing and you don't have to dump as much power. These are the sort of things that people who are always able to squeeze an extra knot out of a boat are always thinking about. So the Weta has extremely effective controls for depowering the boat. It's not at all hard to dump, I would guess, a third of whatever power the sail plan would otherwise deliver. Weta also sails a storm main which is smaller and sits lower on the mast, and that's a good option for learning to sail in higher winds. Keep in mind you can use any of the tips I've shown you uh, either by themselves or in combination. They're highly effective. Now one other thing, I never recommend sailing without the jib. Yeah, doing that also depowers the boat, but it also upsets the balance of, of power and it makes the boat very difficult to turn. I don't think you can afford to give up control in high winds, so I'd keep the jib. The jib really isn't the thing that's gonna put you over. In the meantime, remember these tips anytime you need to slow down or stop the boat. When you're sailing upwind, sheet out, 
and head up. Now downwind is just the opposite. There you'll want to sheet in and head down. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Learn as you go, but don't be afraid to push your personal limits. Most sailing mistakes won't kill. Sailing in progressively higher and higher winds is how you gain better boat handling skills. At some point, you'll be out in 25 knot winds, flying the screecher, sitting on the rail and eating a sandwich. Have fun.